Welcome to IJ Forums. I'm Dick Spotswood, politics and government columnist for the Marin Independent Journal. Today I've got Howard Levitt with me. He's the uh, spokesman for the Golden Gate National Recreation Area. It's a park that has millions of visitors a year. The park stretches from Marin County through San Francisco's coastal area and the Presidio and Fort Mason down to the San Mateo coast. Since its formation, one of the issues that's riled the GGRNA has been the management of dogs at the park. Should they be on leash? Should they be off leash? Should they be banned? Has there been a time when that hasn't been an issue at uh, GGRNA, Howard? No, I'd say that this issue, which is, has a, the deepest passion probably of any issue we face, has been uh, in front of the park since the park was established. Two sides, is that fair to say? Uh, one, is, uh, one takes what position and the other takes what position? Well, there's many sides to this. There are some people who say, why would you allow dogs in a national park area? Other people say, well, you really need to loosen your regulation of dogs. People, other people say, you're really all about protecting natural resources. So we have different viewpoints and our job really is to do several things. We do have a sacred mission to protect resources for the future. That's what the National Park Service does around the country. And Golden Gate National Recreation Area is one of 410 units of the national park system. So we take that duty very, very seriously. At the same time, recreation is in our name. It's in our DNA. It's the reason among many that this park was established, but it was a very important reason. And so when you bring that together with the passion around the issues of dogs, you're bound to have some fireworks. So the GGRNA has done a study, environmental study I presume, uh, and come to a conclusion. What's the conclusion? Well for 14 years we've been developing a plan for managing dog use in the park. And it was predicated really on a couple of different notions. It was based really in our belief here at Golden Gate that dog use of the park if properly managed, can be a, an appropriate way to enjoy the park. But the key is properly managed. Uh, we do have our obligation to, to listen to and take into account the viewpoints of a whole spectrum of users, those who want to enjoy the park with a dog and those who want to have a dog-free encounter and everybody in between. We don't have the luxury of being able to view an issue like this through a single lens. We also have uh, an important duty, and I mentioned it earlier, which is to protect resources for the future. That's why national park areas are established and set up. The uh, conclusion I know is that dog off-leash use, am I using the right term here? Dogs off-leash? Yes. Mm -hmm. Dogs off-leash would be restricted to, I believe, five areas in the park. One in Marin, which is uh, Rodeo Beach at uh, Fort Cronkite, just south of the north of the Golden Gate Bridge. Four in San Francisco. None in San Mateo County. Am I correct? There are seven areas, actually. Okay. Uh, the a couple of the areas in San Francisco. So, for example, at Chrissy Field, there are two areas oh, okay. that are somewhat separated from Chrissy each other. Field as being an area so there, area. there, yeah, there are yeah. five locations. That's correct. Seven areas. And it's less than there had been in the past. I know right here in Marin County, Amir Beach had been a off-leash area for dogs and quite popular. Uh, and that's not going to be included. Am I correct? It does constitute a reduction overall in the amount of space available for off-leash dog use. So the folks who are uh, for off-leash dogs are not pleased. The folks who believe it should be restricted for whatever reason, or more restricted, are pleased, correct? Well, I'd say that when you're, when you're trying to develop a plan that has polarized viewpoints, and this is one of those instances, at the end of the day, it's, it's probable that not any group is gonna feel completely satisfied. But I think that's, that's the key is to try to find that balance between the viewpoints of differing user groups and still achieve the goal of protecting resources. And we believe that we've put together a proposal that does just that. For our Marin County folks, am I correct? Point Reyes National Seashore, separate management, separate deal. That's right, that's a separate part. So we're not talking about that at all. We are not. We're talking about Muir Beach, on south to the San Mateo County Coast. That's right, actually Procedure. Stinson Beach on south. Oh, okay, great. Well, listen, Howard, thank you for coming. I know that uh, the hot seat is uh, not uh, unfamiliar to you. <laughs> and so uh, for the past 14 years, you've been involved in this issue, which is, really has a lot of impact to people all over the, uh, the three counties that make up the GGRNA. I want to thank you for coming by IJ Forums today and at least giving us a little uh, uh, orientation 
Uh, we're going to have a discussion with two very knowledgeable people very shortly. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks. Given that we're dealing with man's best friend, it's probably no surprise that this issue has become so controversial. Hi, I'm Robert Sterling, editor of the Marin IJ, and I want to invite you to go to our website where you'll find links to stories that we've been producing on this hot topic. Those stories include coverage of the last two meetings that the GGNRA has held on the dog leash rules that it's proposed. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy the show. Welcome back to IJ Forums. I'm Dick Spotswood, politics and government columnist for the Marin Independent Journal. Our topic today, dogs on leash, off leash in the Golden Gate National Recreation Area in Marin, San Francisco, and San Mateo counties. We have two guests today that know a great deal about the topic. Barbara Salzman. Uh, Barbara is uh, a Larkspur resident and a longtime president of the Marin Audubon Society. She's one of Marin's most passionate advocates for wetland preservation and a recent inductee into the Marin Women's Hall of Fame. Also with us is Martha Walters of San Rafael. Martha formerly managed the Presidio project before the Presidio Trust was created. She has a background in natural resources and a degree in biology. She's co-founder and currently chair of the Chrissy Field Dog Group. Martha, Barbara, welcome to IJ Forums. Thank you. Uh, Barbara, the GGRA has decided that the ability to walk dogs off leash within the park and recreation area should be limited. And they've decided through an environmental process that it'd be restricted fundamentally to five areas. In Marin, Rodeo Beach, which is at the end of the uh, road to Fort Cronkite. Oh, I know it is. <laughs> yeah. And uh, four locations in San Francisco, mm -hmm. no location in San Mateo County. Did they do the right thing? Did they get it right? Well, uh, Marin Audubon has applauded their, their efforts and the, the uh, uh, conclusion that they've come up with and the recommendation, the, the rule. Um, it is, it's a long-standing problem and unfortunately it started years ago when the, uh, the advisory committee allowed dogs off leash because it's, it's, it's not allowed in any other park in the United States. Um, we think they did it right. They, uh, the only downside for our communities is that the, the, the beach dwelling birds that, that need the beach are going to be limited, but um, the other species the birds, the wildlife, and the vegetative habitats will be better protected with dogs on a leash. Uh, and uh, the beaches, well, there's one beach that will be protected now. Um, your we beach. think they, your beach, right, right. And, and we really haven't gotten into the other, uh, there are many other Audubon chapters in the, in, the, uh, in the Bay Area, and they're all looking at their own, Golden Gate's looking at the San Francisco area. And, and um, there's another chapter in San Mateo. Uh, but basically, we, we, uh, we applaud them for what they did, and, and we hope that they stick with it. Uh, we think it's a fair for the, the, the dog owners. I've owned many dogs myself, and you know, you can enjoy yourself with your dog on a leash and go to the places where they're allowed off leash. And it, it's really um, unusual, and, and we're lucky here because the other places in the United States um, don't allow dogs off leash. Well, Martha, the same question. Did they get it right? They've, they've restricted uh, dog leash, off leash areas. It's an 80,000 80, acre park, and I think it's uh, limited to something like uh, 35 acres total. Yes, it's definitely less than 1%. And no, they did not, uh, the Park Service did not get it right. And we're very concerned because there is no scientific or legal basis for the proposed rule. Uh, the restrictions are over the top. Um, one of the things that we have done as Chrissy Field Dog Group, we hired a um, uh, land use attorney as well as science uh, scientists over the past 10, 15 years, actually 10 years, and there is no scientific basis, there is no legal basis. This is an urban recreation area. When Congress, um, and, uh, the enabling legislation for the GGNRA was just that, an urban recreation area. And in the U.S. House and Senate reports, they talk about dog walking as being a very popular activity, and we think this should be continued. We think that the 1970 pet policy, you know, plus some other measures could be taken, is a very fair, you know, um, um, fair system for dogs to be walked off leash. Let's talk a bit about the science. Mm -hmm. uh, and you both have a, a, a background in, mm -hmm. in this field, so we're not we're talking with some people right. that have something to say about it rather than just 
some of our folks just simply blow it off. Right. Uh, the science as far as dog use, off-leash dog use, mm -hmm. tell me about it as far as birds mm -hmm. and as far as other animals and, and just basically environmental concerns, plants and things like that. Right. Uh, is there a risk to those areas? You're saying no, but I, I, can you amplify it a bit? Well, I, I think that the burden of proof is upon the National Park Service to um, to really quantify the significant risk to birds, to flora, to fauna, and they have not done that. There's no peer-reviewed science, site-specific. You know what's you know what's a peer-reviewed science for Chrissy Field, for uh, Homestead Valley, for Muir Beach, uh, down in San Mateo County, where there's no off-leash. It's just not there. There's a lot of could, maybe, but it's all very indirect. So we don't have any real basis for. Um, you know, what they call is their scientific basis. There is none. Barbara, science. Well, needless to say, I disagree. Having read the, uh, uh, the environmental impact statement, there is an extensive section on, on uh, studies, uh, other places, I grant you, but there are studies of impacts uh, that off-leash dogs have on, or even on-leash if, if they go into habitats. Um, you, you find fewer uh, species using the areas where there are dogs, there's odor problems, they run after wildlife, I've seen this myself. Um, they, the criticism has been that they're, uh, they're not local. Well, you know, if, if that's the only criticism of these studies, it's not valid because there's, I, I've, I've done a lot of advocacy, looked at a lot of studies uh, through the years. Uh, the, it, we, we would get nothing done if we had, because there wouldn't be enough money or time to do st site-specific studies. The, the information from the science is, is transferable to different locations. Uh, they would not have, and, and from, I, I have heard no uh, valid criticism from scientists except for the, the dog advocates about the studies that were cited. Uh, they, they, seem, they seem valid to me and, and to all of the other Audubon chapters and uh, that's a valid uh, uh, let me ask way to, upon which to make a decision. Let me be sp site specific for a second mm -hmm. and I, I know there might be not, there may not be a site specific scientific study, mm -hmm. but I, I'm going to mention a location which I know you've seen and, and, and would have some personal observation about, and my question about is about Muir Beach. And what do you think are the environmental negatives of having dogs off leash at Muir Beach? If you look at, uh, and this is probably not Muir Beach, but this is where the compromise comes in because the dogs are allowed to have a beach. Let's let the, the wildlife have a beach. There are many species that depend on beaches. Uh, sanderlings, many, many shorebird species, that's what they do. Shorebirds follow the shoreline. So when you have extensive dog uh, use, and we have, I should have brought it, we have a, a, a photo on our uh, newsletter uh, that came from Golden Gate Audubon, uh, of a dog chasing um, a huge flock of shorebirds. You, the, the impacts are that the wildlife basically can't, can't use the beaches and they, they need them uh, to feed their young. There's some snowy plovers that can use beaches. You can, they, they use them on migration when they travel long distances from South America to some to you know, Alaska uh, to breed. They need these beaches along the way to stop and to replenish their body weight to, uh, to, to breed successfully. So it, a compromise is, uh, is, is, is needed to allow the dogs to have a place and allow the, the, the birds to have a place. You, you mentioned um, Homestead Valley. There's a, a spotted owl in Hom Homestead Valley. So there's um, a concern about, uh, um, we're glad that they put the leashes on requirement on for Homestead Valley. It's Martha, is it, is it really dogs versus the environment? Not at all. I, th I think that's a big misnomer. It's really about, um, it's about the quality of life. It's about the quality of life, about protecting, protecting recreation. You know, I want to uh, actually just address something that Barbara just spoke about, about dogs. Uh, you know, there's a video of a clip of a dog chasing birds. Well, kids chase birds, people chase birds. It's just not dogs or, you know, it, you can't just identify one subset and say, you know, that's the impact. And again, you know, the Park Service has not given any site-specific information. And so what, you're, what they're giving everybody is anecdotal. 
And so how can you really directly apply to it? So getting back to your uh, question, Dick, no, it's not dogs versus the environment. It's about quality of life for people who live here in the San Francisco Bay Area. There are, I believe, like two million people who live in the three counties in which the GGNRA lands encompass. And um, I, I think it's this big misnomer. We need to protect recreation. There's a coexistence that actually has been happening. Yes, I think there are definitely mitigation measures that could you know, really help the situation and you know, make more people comfortable. But I think that uh, the Park Service has gone way too far. Well, okay, mitigation measures. Uh, mm -hmm. the, it, it, from what Barbara's saying, it would just kind of common sense. There is some kind of conflict between dogs and birds. You just see that it may, maybe kids and birds too. Mm -hmm. So what type of mitigation measures or what else could we have done or could we do mm -hmm. to mitigate the harm and, or the interaction between all sorts of folks and the avian community? Well, I think that's education. Um, one of the things that, <clears throat> excuse me, that uh, the Chrissy Field Dog Group has done with the San Francisco SPCA we um, have developed an off-leash open space dog etiquette class. And in that class, you know, the person who is training, I mean, you're basically training the people, you're not training the dogs. I mean, you're training the dogs, but you're really training, training the people to be aware of their surroundings. You know, if there's a flock of birds, they should not be, you know, throwing the ball towards that. They should be aware of where their dog is. If somebody's having a picnic on the beach, that's the person's responsibility to make sure that the dog doesn't go grab a sandwich. It, it's all about responsible dog ownership. Barbara, the, uh, the, the topic so far has been dogs off leash. Let me ask you your thoughts on dogs on leash in the GGRNA. Uh, well, I think that the compromise is a good one, that, that there are certain places where dogs can go on leash. And having owned three big dogs in my life, there's nothing the matter with dogs on a leash they can adjust quite well to, to being on a leash. But you don't have a problem with dogs on a leash? In, in the places where they're... Tell me where they are, are allowed now. Well, I can go through the list in Marin County. Yeah, there's, yeah, uh, well, I don't know them by, you know, there's uh, Homestead Valley, or they're allowed on a leash. There's some areas near um, Rodeo Lagoon um, where they can go on a leash. Um, there's about 10 or 12 areas that uh, in Marin where they're allowed. I, I know Congress oh, member Jackie Spear had, had complained that there was no location in San Mateo County. She represents San Mateo County and Southern mm -hmm. San Francisco County. Uh, people forget she also has a part yes, of the county. I know. Uh, <laughs> That's right, she <laughs> does. But, but comment on that, is it was, was that a glitch in the process that San Mateo was left out or was a scientific reason why no San Mateo? You know, I can't answer that question because I focused on Marin okay. and I don't know why. Uh, maybe there's no beach in, in, in San Mateo. I don't know why. But there are, you know, there's Ocean Beach, there's Fort Funston, there's Chrissy Field, and there's Fort Mason in, in Marin County. So there's a lot of places that are, um, I, I can't speak to um, the situation in Jackie's. Uh, Martha, area. I know that you're very involved, you're Marinite, but very involved with the Chrissy Field Dog Group. Of course. San yes. Francisco, everybody, viewers, Marin viewers who are very uh, provincial should know Chrissy Field is the big flat area. It used to be an airport. Yes. When I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, in the Marina District, between the Marina District and the Golden Gate, uh, mm -hmm. Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Uh, and, and, and it's highly used. So I've been asking questions about Barbara about birds, but let's, let's put the birds aside for a second. Mm -hmm. And let me ask you about the interaction between uh, humans who are perhaps concerned about dogs. Mm -hmm. There are people who are terrified mm -hmm. of dogs, mm -hmm. maybe justly, unjustly, may or perhaps a childhood experience. What about those folks? How do you react with them when there's dogs off leash? What's the proper etiquette? And not only that, what's the proper management in a place so that you could have dogs off leash and these folks aren't terrified? Right, are you specifically talking about the whole GGNRA or Chrissy Field? No, let's, let's, let's hone in on Chrissy Field and maybe I'll go over to your beach. Okay, uh, one of the things that was, uh, somebody had the foresight, actually it was the Haas family who really loved dogs. So what they did, they designed and constructed Chrissy Field uh, for 70 acres of off-leash dog use. By and large, it's worked very well. Yes, there have been a couple anomalies where people have been irresponsible dog owners. And you know, we take that very seriously. You know, we understand that you know, people need to be aware and you know, be responsible for their dogs. Again, it gets back to education. 
But also look at the layout at Chrissy Field. There's a huge carrying capacity. A lot of different uses happen at Chrissy Field. You have windsurfers, you have kiteboarders, you have bicyclists, you have joggers, you have walkers, you have tourists on their bikes. I mean, it's a huge number. And it's amazing how few incidents happen at Chrissy Field, especially with dogs. So for the Park Service to say that no more dog use at, Chris, at, at, sorry, at East Beach, you know, it's, that is irresponsible. I mean, th what's going to happen is that all of the dogs that are on East Beach will go to Central Beach, and that's going to create more conflict. And they're going to reduce the amount of dogs on the grassy airfield. Same concept. And then what's going to happen? A lot of the dog owners are going to go into the city parks in San Francisco that are already, you know, stressed and overstrained, overcrowded. So it doesn't make a lot of sense, and it's very disconcerting that the Park Service doesn't work with the local jurisdictions. It's very, you know, why aren't they working with the Board of Supervisors from all three counties about this issue? As you are well aware, 22 elected officials oppose the proposed plan and the proposed rule. So it's very significant that the Park Service, who's a federal agency, is not working with communities on this issue. Robert, is that true that the uh, Park Service The is Park not Service has worked with the community groups for 14 years. I mean, I, I know many Audubon people who have gone to public meetings about this issue for many years. Uh, education is fine. Uh, it doesn't work everywhere. It might work on a few people. Uh, we've tried education for bikers here, for, for, <laughs> for dogs. You know, wildlife, our point is that wildlife is subject to all of these impacts. You can say, well, it isn't, it, isn't, it isn't the dogs, it's the bikers, or it isn't the dogs, it's the whatever, it's the children. For the wildlife, it's all of those impacts. It's a combination. So you can't, you, you can't say that they're worse than us or they're, they're, they're out there also because it's, it's the cumulative impact of all of these uses. There are 10, there are 10, 10 dog parks in this county. Uh, the, the, the county lets, lets off-leash dogs on their fire roads. Uh, there are plenty of places in Marin County where people can go with dogs. And, and to think that the National Park Service that, that acquired these lands for their resource value and, and managed them for everybody uh, has a responsibility to individual dog owners or to any special interest, even, even bird groups. Uh, it, it, it's just not, not uh, acceptable. Uh, Barbara, a few uh, episodes back, we had a uh, discussion between the foot people and the cycling mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. uh, right. and, and uh, similar concerns. Yes, exactly. But one of the other things that's similar and that, uh, that Martha mentioned, and I know that the uh, uh, foot people brought up, was the uh, rogue element in the bicycling community. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Martha's suggestion has mentioned there is a rogue element in the mm -hmm. dog community. But my question to you is, is this about the rogue element causing problems or is it inherent? It's about, it's about responsible and sensitive management of public lands, for all the public lands. Uh, I mean, it, it, the, all of the public owns these lands. And it is, it is about, to us, protecting the resources and, and to the park, too. That's, that's the basis upon which they made their, their recommendation. But is there, a, if the uh, dog community were 100%, I know this is statistically it impossible. It never happened. But, but, but just <laughs> theoretically, are we talking about the rogue folks? Or are we talking about even people who have dogs under control? Well, I think if the rogue folks were, it, it, you're right, it, it is impossible to bring everybody under control because you have people that come to these lands from other places they don't know. Yeah. yeah, right. And so that, that's not realistic. But you know, the, the people that are, are uh, unless you have some regulations that have a reason behind them and, they're, and the reason is conveyed to the public, they have no idea. People, they, they can, you know, have their dogs on or off a leash. If, unless you have those rules, they would have their dogs off a leash. And, and many, I mean, I, I've looked at dogs enough during my life. You can have very responsible, but under some circumstances, I don't know that there's a dog around that isn't going to run off after a deer or after a, you know, bird or something. Uh, they're just, it isn't just the people, it's the dog also. Uh, so, we don't think that'll work. The, 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 the Park Service is doing the right thing. Martha, it, it, all this seems to me to be uh, under the rubric of management. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about managing something, and mm -hmm. the Golden Gate National Recreation Area is, is the governmental agency assigned to manage its lands. How would you manage those lands 
differently in a way they would respect the uh, enjoyment of the dog users while at the simultaneously respecting the concerns that uh, the Audubon community has raised. Sure, it's about coexistence. And one of the things that we have proposed numerous times to the Park Service is to adopt something similar to the uh, City of Boulder, Colorado's Green Tag Program. And that's where um, if there, it targets the users, not the areas. So, uh, for example, what happens in the Boulder Program, which we think actually is very successful, the Park Service doesn't think so, but we have been there, we've, we visited there. And so if you have a dog, you go to a class, an hour class, you certify that you will obey to these rules, and there's punitive, you know, I mean, there are punitive actions. They're, it's a very clear, enforceable program. Three tickets and you're out. And there, you know, I forget what the, you know, the um, money that associated with each ticket, but that person is responsible for their dog and their actions. And actually, it's been very successful. So we have, you know, approached the Park Service about, you know, some, a solution, something like that, and they don't, they're not interested in that. Is enforcement the problem? I know that one of the concerns about the mm -hmm. folks who, uh, uh, the foot people, the people who mm -hmm. talk about the mountain bike mm -hmm. concerns, is the lack of enforcement uh, because of, frankly, lack of resources uh, that the uh, county faces and the uh, state parks face, not so much GGRNA. It's a different topic, and I don't know about that. But I can tell you on the Marin County lands, the concern about the lack of resources to enforce the, the story. Is that enforceable, what you're suggesting? Can, can that be made real on the ground to work? Yes, I think it can. Um, one of the things that has been the disconnect all these years with the 1979 pet policy is that the Park Service has not enforced. You don't know where you can go at Chrissy Field or anywhere else, you know, in the GGNRA because there's not adequate si uh, signage. Um, they used to have signage that said voice control area. So people would know. And there was no enforcement whatsoever. So, you know, I, I think that's been part of the problem. We don't know. And the Park Service doesn't want to be in the, in the process of managing dogs. That's been very clear from the Park Service Director, John Jarvis. He thinks that dogs should not be part of, the, of this urban recreation area, and he's incorrect. Barbara, enforcement. In the old laws, were they enforced? And the old laws weren't enforced, unfortunately. That's part of the problem because okay. the the um, advisory committee. You remember when they had that Amy Myers was oh, yeah. on and whatever, uh, and and I can tell you the reason you may know, but they they declined to have the dog dog uh, um, regulations enforced. Why? Well, <laughs> uh, because someone who was influential on the on the advisory committee uh, didn't simply didn't want it to happen. Didn't want it to happen. Is right? it a resource issue or is it just a, a no, political will issue? It, it was uh, it was an issue of I have a dog and I want to walk the dog free, so I don't want to have it. I'm, and I would like to say about the Boulder that sounds wonderful as mm -hmm. long as they are the only people that go to the facility. Uh, I mean, the, the, and and the people that come to, I mean. GGNRA gets people from all over the place, not just, they get people I understand that. from the Bay right. Area. So to, an, to uh, mm -hmm. uh, enact a, a program like that, I just don't see how it would be workable. Trying to be proactive for a second, <laughs> and as Barbara knows, I'm a former city councilman, and city councilman <laughs> right. always try to find a middle ground to make sure. the community, yeah. the goal is to make the community work. <laughs> people forget that's the goal. Of course. And <laughs> so when I hear an idea that, that all of a sudden has some residents, I'm gonna turn to you mm -hmm. and say, uh, uh, Barbara's saying, well, that's a great idea, uh, and if those were the only there. folks that uh, uh, <laughs> did it, why not a pilot program, uh, I'm picking your beach at random, oh, sure. uh, <laughs> that is only open to people who follow the strict guidelines you outlined for Boulder, Colorado? I think it would be wonderful. We've offered that to the Park Service, like three or four sites and they just won't take us up on it. I'm suggesting one, only as a yeah, pilot. Yeah, that's fine. You know, not, not I, would, I would encourage it. How do you enforce it? You know, I always get down to enforcement as mm, the, the issue. Uh, and that was the concern, once again, with the bike folks, mm -hmm. uh, who, who agreed that if it could be enforced, mm -hmm. then we started to have a middle ground. Uh, so is it enforceable? Yes, it's enforceable if they're clear workable enforcement plan and there's not <clears throat> excuse me the monitoring program that's in the proposed rule um, is very punitive it's very one-sided the park superintendent can unilaterally arbitrarily close down any area that is open to any form of dog walking at his or her whim that's very disconcerting that's not a fair process so when you're talking about uh, you know if you have a clear enforceable plan 
that'll work, but the Park Service hasn't done that yet. They haven't proposed that. The, it, 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 the, the struggle uh, on all these, uh, Barbara, is to come up with something that the other side can live with, but it's meaningful, meaningful compromise, enforceable compromise. Are we getting to some place where we, we start to have at least a pilot program? I, I don't, I, well, I don't agree with the interpretation of what, what the GGNRA is doing because, I mean, I've read it. That's a very last resort. There are many other steps that they are proposing to do before they would ever close an area. So, you know, it, it just isn't, it, it, well, it, it isn't fair to, to be saying that when, when what is in the rule is clearly a lot of other things first. Well, folks, um, uh, uh, Martha and, and Barbara, this is a uh, obviously a passionate issue yes. Yes. Uh, that affects really mm -hmm. literally thousands, maybe tens of thousands. No, of millions folks. of people. Millions of people. Uh, and so we're not going to resolve it today, but I think we've started to make a little bit of progress in seeing each other's viewpoint a little bit more. I want to thank you, Barbara Salzman and, and Martha Walters, for being guests on IJ Forum today. Thank you. Thank you.